Hey guys, Brother Cody here. I just want to do a quick special things segment for this week's Children's Church. Um, as you know, I work for um, the Henry County 911, the Sheriff's Office, and the Jail. I do IT for those three um, organizations. And I just want to take you on a little back, behind the scenes tour of um, my work. We're going to look at the dispatch center, uh, see some of the dispatchers answering calls. Uh, look at the mobile command unit that can go out um, and act like a um, dispatch center on wheels. And then we'll also take a little tour of one of the jail pods uh, just to get kind of show you guys um, why you definitely don't want to end up in jail. So um, let's get started. All right, guys, this is the dispatch center. Um, as you can see, we have 18 consoles. Um, so 18 dispatchers can be in this center all at the same time. Um, they are responsible for handling the calls from fire to um, police to the sheriff's office, any of those units. Um, this is where it all happens. All right, so this is what a normal dispatch console looks like. We have our telephone on the left, a map. Um, the CAD software, the, how they take and process calls, and then the radio unit on the right-hand side, how they talk over the radio. Henry County 911, what is the location of your emergency? Okay. What color is the Nissan Titan? Let me know if he turns into one of those businesses there. I'm going to give a lookout to the units in the area. But I'm also going to transfer you to Clayton County because you're about to go into Clayton County once you pass the CarMax there, okay? Hold on just a moment. Hold on just a moment for me. Parkway 138 West Mount Zion Parkway, northbound on Mount Zion Parkway, 70 on 72. It's going to be a gray in color Nissan Titan, Tom Mary Sam, 627, TMS 627. Clayton, this is Henry with a transfer. They're on Mount Zion Parkway, northbound from 138. It's going to be referenced to a rec. Yes. They're northbound on, on Mount Zion Parkway. It's going to be referenced to a reckless driver coming into your jurisdiction. Yeah, hang on. All right, guys, so what you just heard was a, a dispatcher answering a call inside the building. Um, and this unit right here is a mobile command center where you can answer those same calls uh, from anywhere in the county. Um, so you could just drive to a scene um, and be able to dispatch from here. They do use these a lot with roadblocks and um, things like that. So that's what this unit is for. All right, and this is the inside of that unit. Um, as you can see, just the, the basics of what you need, computer access, uh, radios, um, as you can see, all lined up. So basically everything you would need. Um, it's got a satellite built into it on how it, that's how it can get internet. Um, so pretty cool unit. Um, here is the front of the bus. As you can see, so, pretty cool. All right, guys, here is where you never want to end up. Um, this is a jail cell in the Henry County Jail. Um, this is what they call a pod. Uh, where this is an all mail cell. Um, here's just how how you talk to certain people. That's the phones. 
Um, this is where the officers come in and out of. Uh, as you can see, the little picnic tables is where you can eat and sit. Um, and here are the actual cells all uh, locked. Um, pretty basics. You got a toilet, you got a little table, and you got a bunk bed that you share with someone. Uh, so really nothing in there and it's super cold in there so and you just get like a little basic blanket to sleep on so n does not look fun at all here's the showers um, you basically have to go in there with just the basics to get cleaned and washed every day um, so no fun at all hopefully none of us ever end up there um, but that's just kind of an inside look at one of the jail pods Hey guys, what's going on? But Dakota here again uh, for another week of Children's Church. I uh, hope you guys are having a great week. Um, I'm actually in my office today. A um, little lunch break uh, Children's Church video. So if you have a Bible, go ahead and grab it. Um, and I got something to show you. Who can tell me what this is? This may be an ancient artifact for some of you. This is a disposable camera, and if we open it up, look at this thing. Looks pretty crazy, right? Let's get it all the way open. So, this is how they used to take pictures in the olden days. Um, basically there's some film in here and you get 27 shots um, so you can take 27 pictures on this thing and what you would do wind it up wait for it to stop take a picture wind it again now you have 26 more pictures uh, and when it was done you would take it have to drive in your car to a uh, place where they could develop the pictures so they take the film out Kind of like I have another old one. You see all these old cameras behind me. I like to collect them. But here's one. And here is where the film would go. In there. So when you're done taking the pictures, you take them to a store. Um, they take the film out and then they develop them. So say you're on vacation, take some family pictures out by the beach with the nice little grass and sand. Um, you get home, uh, take your pictures to get developed. Uh, they may all be blurry. They may all be bad. Um, so, and then you don't have any family pictures. So, <laughs> kind of a crazy way um, that we used to have to do things. And Brother Cody is old enough where I grew up with a lot of these, um, use, using these uh, when I was younger. So, that just tells you how old I am. Um, but anyway, you had to go through a lot of obstacles and a lot of steps to get the picture from here to the actual uh, four by six, like physical paper copy that you see. Um, but nowadays, it's not like that. It's not as hard, right? Um, we have phones and you can take 27 pictures on that camera. My phone can probably take 27,000 pictures. That's just how uh, far we've come. Um, there's not a lot of obstacles in getting the picture taken to getting it out to somebody. Um, all you have to do is send it uh, send it via email, text, um, you can even send it via Facebook. Uh, go ahead and post your little Instagram picture with your crazy little filter on it. I know how some of you are. Um, Brother Cody's the same way. Um, but anyway, not a lot of obstacles in getting that picture taken and getting it to where it needs to go, right? Um, and in the Bible, it, there actually used to be a bunch of obstacles in getting uh, our prayers and um, having our sins forgiven to the Lord, right? So we would have to, uh, people in the Old Testament, they would have to um, go to a temple. Um, they would have to uh, present a sacrifice uh, to the priest. The priest would take the sacrifice to the altar um, and present that sacrifice as a um, payment for the sins that that person had uh, made so they were asking for forgiveness of sins through this blood sacrifice on the altar uh, and presenting it to God and 
uh, in the tabernacle back in the Old Testament, you know, everything had to be a certain way. Um, just anybody couldn't be in there um, because it was a holy, sacred place. Um, so it was a lot different back then. Um, and thankfully, um, it's not as hard to talk to God um, these days as it used to be. Just like it's uh, not as hard to get a picture captured and sent off um, as it used to be with that disposable camera and that film uh, technology that used to be. Um, so I just wanted to read a few verses real quick. Um, if you have your Bible, go ahead and turn to Hebrews 9, verse 28. Um, so thankfully, as you probably already know, um, Jesus was the sacrifice that took place of all other blood sacrifices uh, in the world. So there's no longer a need to sacrifice goats and calves and uh, oxen like we see in the Bible uh, because Jesus paid the ultimate sacrifice for us as Christians um, when he died on the cross. So that's a great thing. Um, Hebrews 9, 28 says, So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. Um, so he paid the ultimate price for the sins of the whole world. We've talked about it in the past. Um, but he was willing to uh, live that sinless life and still go to the cross uh, for that payment to reconcile us, as we talked about a few weeks ago, reconcile us back to God. Um, and in Hebrews 9 verse 11 the Bible says, But Christ being come and high priest, so instead of the high priest in the Old Testament that would have to take that blood uh, sacrifice, like that animal uh, or whatever it might be, um, it says, But Christ being come and high priest of good things to come by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building, neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood, he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. So that's another good verse for um, eternal salvation because he made he paid the ultimate price one time. That's all it took, um, and it says uh, eternal redemption for us. For us, so those of us that trust in him, uh, we can have that eternal redemption, which is amazing. Um, so as a child of God, we no longer have all of these obstacles between us and God. Uh, we can directly fellowship and commune with God every day, um, every minute of the day, every second of the day. As much as we want to, we can uh, commune and fellowship with God. All those obstacles of the past in the Old Testament are gone uh, thanks to Jesus. So, man, that's a great thing. Um, so... Uh, in Hebrews 7.25, I want to close with this one. Um, it says, Wherefore he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto him, unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. Um, so if you trust in Jesus as your Savior, um, he is forever living um, to kind of work on behalf of us as Christians. Um, he is making a way for us, um, you know, talking to God, um, working on our behalf um, now that we are Christians and we've trusted him. So, man, these are incredible verses um, because Jesus is an incredible Savior in what he did um, just so that we could have that fellowship uh, with God and we can make, be made right with God. Um, so I hope that that encourages you. Um, I hope that those verses are very encouraging to you because they definitely are for me um, and definitely go out and share this um, maybe somebody who doesn't know the Lord uh, share all the things that maybe people used to have to do um, to have their sins forgiven and now Jesus has made the ultimate sacrifice so that the whole world could have their sins forgiven if they would just ask uh, believe and confess like we've talked about in the past um, ask uh, for forgiveness of your sins, believe in Christ, uh, Jesus Christ, and confess your sins. Um, that's all it takes. Um, so some encouraging um, verses, just that I thought that I had. Um, so thankfully we don't have to use these bad boys anymore. Uh, we have some awesome technology these days. And thankfully we don't have to go to the priest and go to the tabernacle 
and offer blood sacrifices um, to ask for forgiveness and talk to God. Uh, we can trust in Jesus and the sacrifice that he made um, and have communion and fellowship with God every day, all day. So great thought, uh, just a, a thought to think about, um, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, we'll see you next week, and um, hopefully see you soon in Children's Church. So have a great week, guys. See you.